Hi, this is Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. Listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, can you go ahead and click subscribe so that you always know when I drop new episodes? You'll find it helpful to have that, I'm sure. Um, this is a Read Repair Shop episode, and I'm looking at anonymous oboist number 593's reads. Um, all of them look like reads at first, and they all play right out of the out of the case. But as I scrape, it turns out that there are some very fundamental problems going on. Watch and learn. Thank you for sending your reads. I'm looking at them here. And I feel like you've got a, a, a lot of stuff going on. Um, the three reads that you've sent me uh, look really different from each other in in some ways. And I'm seeing, before I even like play them or, or scrape on them, I'm seeing some dramatic differences. And the most urgent one is that, as I, as I look at these three, these two, the red and the green, like have a lot, have a very similar um, structure. They're both relatively long, at like 72 millimeters or so. This one, uh, the red one, is in fact overwound a little, which is concerning, but I'll get to that in a, in a little bit. Um, but these look very much like reads that I sort of recognize and understand. This guy, the other red one, the non-overwound red one, um, is very different. He's much shorter, much wider. Uh, it looks as though the cane itself is thin, and I'm saying that because I can see that you've still got some bark in the heart, and yet it it feels and appears to be thin. Um, and he's uh, overlapped backwards. So let me explain some of what I'm looking at here. First of all, when I wind... Um, when you put your two pieces of cane together to wind on, you probably know this already, I'm just stating it for the record. We like to wind it this way so that you can sort of see the overlap of the of the bottom blade on the left hand side away from you. Um, and this is so that as you're winding like a right-handed person, which it appears that you do, um, your those two blades, which are this way, are forced closer and closer and closer together rather than being forced farther and farther apart with each new wind. Um, and so what I'm seeing here is that because your uh, overlap has, has gone this way, the wrong way, and I can see the, the under blade on the right hand side rather than the left, um, and I can see that he's a little bit uh, off center in this way, he's a little bit tilted up top, and um, I noticed that as you move up toward the top of your thread here on this read specifically and not the others, um, the thread seems to broaden a little bit as you get to the throat. So you've wound a little bit less tightly right here at the throat. And um, whether it's that this cane is as a much wider shape or that you've wound it on a little bit shorter, you've got a much uh, wider throat here than on the other two. So a little bit, this guy is an outlier from the other two. Um, you've also finished him much, much shorter. Ah, uh, looks like, huh, it's funny, much, much shorter, but that translates to just at 70, which is a totally normal length for a read. Here's what we get when I, uh, when I crow it. The crow is actually extremely easy. It's the low crow comes right away. Um, and I can see on your plaque, on my plaque, <laughs> really, um, that, that that makes sense to me actually, because there's quite a, a, an easy transition from the tip into the heart on both sides. You've got nice slope in your tip. The tip actually looks really lovely, although it could be thinner on the sides. Um, but I feel like our big problem on this read is that the heart feels too thin. And I can see that you haven't taken much because I can still see bark. So um, there's a lot going against this read. And I'd be willing to blame the cane for it um, because it appears to be quite thin. But I'm going to go ahead and scrape a little to see if we can uh, compensate because I always think there's a chance. Right, so looking at this read specifically, um, what I really want to do is separate the tip from the heart a little bit more so that the heart is able to give it a little bit more good resistance. Should I play this before I uh, before I uh, scrape? I should. So what we've got is a a very easy read 
that feels a little bit wild and uh, that feels quite a bit wild actually um, and is quite closed which makes sense to me because of the way your overlap has has gone amok. Um, I find that when my overlap goes the wrong way the it leads to an instability up top and it tends to lead to a very very closed and small read. Um, so with all of this said there there is some fundamental problem with the wind uh, and the and I think that the cane is overly thin but if I can take the very very outside of the tip from the gutter of the rooftop all the way up the side and make sure that that side of the tip is the thinnest part and as I'm doing this I'm also really redefining that cut in right at the gutter I hope you can see what I'm doing um, and my my twofold idea here is to um, make sure that the reed slopes outward to the side the whole time and to further separate the tip from the heart to make the heart think it's thicker so I've done that on two, uh, the right and the left now I'll do it on this upper blade right side ooh, ooh, ooh. that may have been a little too much but um, I don't know if you're seeing just how much cane I'm able to get off from the side of your reed. Um, I wonder, I'm going to be interested to see whether that is the case with your other two as well. Um, but right here, this leftmost and rightmost three grains at the side of the tip is kind of a big deal. Let's see what I just did, having done only that. Now, I'm still getting a very easy crow. Um, the the low, uh, low crow comes in right away when I try to crow this, but um, it's a better organized crow, which I hope you can hear. Rather than being it it actually is giving me octaves now. And I'm going to clip a little bit to bring that up to a C and see what we've done. Might still be a B. Let me go one more iota. Not looking at a tuner at this point. I'm just sort of doing it by smell. There's my C crow. So now that is a dramatic difference. Did you see that all I did, literally all I did, was the leftmost and rightmost three or four grains over here. I cut in harder at the gutter. I took the sides of the tip to be the thinnest part and brought that all the way up to the corner. That's all I scraped. And immediately I got a darker sound, um, a better response, and a more uh, comfortable resistance so that now I can blow into this reed safely without going wild all over the place. What happened? I did nothing but put it in my mouth and I lost response. I see what happened. So now I'm feeling a little bit of leakage right around in here, which is where the response uh, went amiss. And of course, if I seal it at the bottom and suck on it from the top, Oh yeah, I can easily feel that this reed is losing air um, through the sides right there. Um, my gut feeling here is that if I slap a little bit of Teflon tape around the sides of this to seal it, yeah, the leak is low near the thread. Um, so yet another aspect of your original winding problem, I think. I'm gonna do that because I think this reed is actually very fine, and I haven't done much. Uh, I haven't done much to it. I'm sure you're familiar with this already. It's just uh, plumber's tape. You can find it at your hardware store. It costs like a dollar. 
and it sticks to itself but not to you, which is makes it easy to work with. And now this reed. Honestly, this came together um, better than I expected um, with the, uh, the problems that we initially saw. This was a really, really nice read. It just needed better slope in the tip. Okay, I'm setting that aside because that was great. Um, these guys. I'm going to deal first with uh, this green one because it is not overwound down here. It's not leaking as far as I can tell. It's um, it's quite long is my main concern with this one and also with your red one. They're, they're similar. Um, this guy is not overwound, which is great, but your whole structure is very, very high. And I wonder if you're doing that on purpose or if that's uh, an accident of some sort. Um, he's almost 72 millimeters long. Your rooftop sits at 68 and the bottom of the heart at 63. And me, I would have both of those, uh, all three of those top numbers, um, a solid two millimeters lower. Now, Measurements are, are uh, individual, of course. There may be a, a reason that you do this. This may be the way you make all of your reads. For me, this would uh, a read structured like this would translate to one that feels um, leggy and a little unstable at the tip and probably doesn't have a, a great deal of, of depth in the sound. So I'm wondering if that's what we're actually going to see here. It's got a low crow, so there's room to clip. something really specific in your email to me, which I'm opening right now. In your email to me, you specifically said, uh, the problem is that my reads die very quickly. They may even be dead while you're still scraping. And that actually is a, um, a description that rings very true to me for a read that sits this long. So I wonder if you might consider uh, in your future read making, just setting this, orienting this whole top area of your reed down, at least a millimeter, if not two millimeters. Um, like that's not something I can do from here, although I could lower the, the rooftop. It's just gonna shrink the heart because you've done a really, really lovely job at setting this uh, very important area of the window right below the heart. I actually really like the way you've done that. That's the way I do mine too. I just do it two millimeters lower. Um, and obviously that's not a thing I can scrape to solve. So now that I'm looking at this, what I'm wondering is in terms of improving this read, if I could, your rooftop, it's nicely constructed, but it's a little bit um, sort of domed and a little bit flat-ish, which is not a bad thing, but I'm wondering if I took your corners, uh, the, the gutters of the rooftop, took the triangle down from here to there a little bit without dropping the, the peak of your rooftop very much. I wonder if that might give us um, sort of the same thing we got over here, thinning the sides of the tip and also lowering that rooftop a little bit, which gives us room to clip, which gives us uh, maybe a more, uh, a lower and more centered read. That's gonna be the thing I try here. Uh, and my other observation, which I did not notice on, uh, on your little short read here, is that it looks as though your scrape right in this area, right below the heart, um, might slightly infringe on the on the rails. In fact, I feel like I don't see bark even through this area. And that also feels disconcerting to me. Um, I cut very deeply behind my heart, just like you do, but 
I, I really try to be very careful of this rail because I think it provides structure all the way up into the heart and it feels to me a little like you've lost that structure. Um, sometimes that can have the effect of uh, sort of metaphorically chopping the reed in half um, so that you end up not being able to really access the good vibrations down here. So I'm not going to touch that area because I, I can't make it better. I could only make it worse. But what I am going to do is try bringing the uh, the steepness of your rooftop down a little bit. Now, And I'm not doing much because this reed actually has a lot of good qualities and because um, the, the fundamental issue is just one of length and because it's the windows that are too long and too, um, because it's the windows that are too long, I can't add wood back into them. So instead, I'm trying to restructure your rooftop and take the very, very sides of the tip away. <coughs> so we've lost the crow, but I'm going to clip to bring that back. <coughs> Still low. One more clip. saying very recently that I didn't think there was a leak but I hear it now as I'm playing and as I seal up that reed um, and suck on it I want to say that the leak is happening in this area um, it's not down at the at the thread I don't think yeah indeed it's right here in this area uh, below the heart that we identified as being of concern uh because your scrape takes the bark. Um, now this is something I can't really fix with Teflon tape. I could fix it with a, um, I could fix it with nail polish, but I think I'm not going to. It doesn't always work all that well and it just sort of gunks things up. Um, the reed that I've got now, having scraped, having lowered your rooftop and scraped the corners, um, has more resistance than the reed that you sent me did. And if we don't like that, if that feels like too much, because it feels like it might be a little too much, especially in conjunction with the slight leak here, which is also impacting your, um, uh, which is also impacting your response. I'm just cleaning the corners right now, but I'm thinking that I might just do a quick little uh, run through the channels of the heart to take away a little resistance without changing pitch or quality. At least I hope that's what I'm doing. <laughs> also having the effect of uh, leaving some strength at the side to help counter your, your damage right below the heart. <laughs> okay, so I haven't been able to clip it back too much because I haven't quite dared to bring your rooftop back as much as I wanted to. Um, but hopefully th th that I, I hope that this analysis feels helpful in that going forward you could restructure a little bit lower because there's nothing really wrong with this read, right? I, I feel like I've been criticizing it for 10 minutes, but your big issue is here and then just the, the height and measurements here. Um, and I think if you get all of that settled down, you're gonna have a lot more success with this read. So let me set this guy down for a moment and turn my attention to your red read. Um, this one shares a, a similar issue. It is also quite high. It's 72 and change up top and your whole rooftop and, uh, and windows are 
a solid two or three millimeters higher than mine would be. And again, my, my measurements are not gospel here. Um, but my bigger concern with this one is that he's, he also appears to be overwound. I see your thread going all the way to 48, um, which says to me that right around here is where your tube ends. And these last couple of pieces of cane are probably compressing your your cane a little bit. A couple of winds of thread are compressing the cane. The overwind is often a fatal flaw and one that, that concerns me. So we'll keep that in mind as we go forward here. This guy doesn't really seem to have much of a crow at all. I'm going to pop my plaque in and take a look. And I see your same uh, maybe damage area right in, especially on the right hand side, actually of both of these uh, areas, right below the heart, you've allowed your knife to come over the side a little bit too much. Um, and so that is of concern to me. But it really just feels like this reed isn't um, responsive. We're not getting a crow and I can't find response. And I see that in this reed. I love how thin you are right in this area, but it doesn't look as though the tip is thinner than it. And especially right here, I don't know if you can see. Here's your rooftop on this side. It's pretty clear and there's a slope out toward the corner. But on this side, like maybe that's your rooftop, but then it's all like covered with snow. And I know you're down in the south. Maybe you uh, don't see snow on your rooftops like we do. It's snowing right now for me. Um, but this is a real big lumpy place and I'm just looking, you know, basically at symmetry, left to right, front to back. This side looks better, but again on the left there's more bulk up in this area. So that's what I'm going to do to try to tackle this reed. I'm going to start by uh, re-establishing this rooftop, making sure that the sides and corners of your tip are the thinnest part. And then maybe we're going to have to help the heart a little bit, but we'll see. I'm just cutting right there. Here too. It's funny, there's um, a lot of wood here on the far right hand side. And over on the left-hand side, it wasn't that there was so much bulk. You'd done a nice job at the tip of the tip. Um, it was just a problem right at that rooftop. Over here, same deal. There's quite a lot to get at the right-hand side of the tip. And less to get, but more to structure on the left. And Everyone has trouble, right, with this left to right symmetry. This is, you're not weird for it. Um, because, of course, we want the left and the right hand sides of the rooftop to look exactly the same, but it's such a different physical thing you have to do on the two sides, right? Here you're like so, but over here you're like way up with my elbow in the air in a very unladylike manner, trying to just like access that region. It's very different than what you do on the right. Um, I still don't have a crow here, but okay, this read concerns me. Um, the response is okay. We've got the tip vibrating now, but I can clearly feel like on my on the sides of my face that there's leakage right around here. Um, and I don't know how much more I can do to find depth in this read because it's just sitting so high and like all of this area is sort of dead space a little bit. Um, the, the leakage that you've got over at the sides here and the, the damage that you've got to the bark here is really cutting the reed in half. So I've kind of only got this very top part functioning and I'm not sure we can get the rest of this connected and it's overwound. So it's interesting actually, as I glanced at these reeds early on, this one concerned me the most because it was short and fat and funny looking. Um, but it proved to be quite a promising read. This one looked to me to be the most 
at a glance looked the most promising because I could see how well you had finished it down in here and I liked how thick the heart had stayed. But because of the basic, like, tall measurement of it um, and the damage that happened right in this area, I wasn't able to make it as fantastic as I wanted to. Um, so what I'm hoping that you get from this conversation is not three amazing reads back in the mail to you, although I will send these back in the mail to you and hopefully we've improved them a little bit. Um, but the message that there's just a little bit of fundamental stuff that needs to be taken care of in your read making. Um, care and attention to the wind itself so that you never go over the end of your tube so that you're winding at a consistent length so that your throat dimension is consistent. Um, I'm not sure what your wind length was on these overall, but it seems like it may have been different for this one and for this one. And I'm judging that just looking at the throat of the reed right above the above the wind. Um, now that I've covered this with a Teflon tape, it may be hard to see, but um, this looks so narrow to me. And because the whole reed is placed so high, it just, it feels like you're, like a reed that's on stilts a little bit. Like, I just find it hard to get down to the depth, down to that, like, comfortable, fundamental pitch floor and sound that I would get if my feet were on the ground instead of, like, five feet off of the ground on stilts. I'm speaking in metaphor, of course, um, but I hope that this feels a little bit helpful. I think I would just restructure your reed making, maybe winding a millimeter shorter, maybe, uh, for these long guys, being careful not to overwind, and then being really, really uh, cognizant of where you're placing that rooftop and tip. It almost looks as though after you clipped it open, you sort of oriented everything to the, the visual tip of your reed instead of to the thread um, or to the, the base of the reed. And I think I might rethink that. I quite like the way that this reed feels, but I feel the leak and I can feel the, the tightness down here. Um, it doesn't feel like I can really push air through it very easily. So winding a little bit shorter, yes. Here. This guy that we've worked on is dramatically leaky uh, right by the heart and overwound and overlong. And I kind of don't think there's a read in there, I'm sorry to say. And you're a little short guy. Has actually a great deal of fullness. Um, I know I criticized the uh, thickness of the cane, um, or the thinness of the cane, rather, uh, because I don't like the way this heart looks visibly. I can see that there's a lot of that chalky uh, stuff that's right under the bark, um, that's right there uh, on the surface of your reed, but I'm disinclined to scrape it off because the reed is working and it feels really, really nice to me. Um, if you're using cane like this, on a reed that's structured like this, then I think you have something going for you. When you're winding and doing basic construction on your reed, you really have to pay attention to your lengths, your dimensions, and what, exactly where that edge of your knife is going. Um, you can do a lot of damage without realizing it early on that can be really hard to recover later. Um, I really hope that this has been helpful. This has been a Reed Repair Shop episode. You can follow these videos here on YouTube. Please do subscribe. Uh, and you can find me at JanetIngle.com if you need to order reads or cane or if you want to send your reads to me for a read repair shop session. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.